first of all, we have a podcast which will be done by me and Ish. Mm-hmm. It will be on Linux distributions, nothing really fancy or specific being prepared. But yeah, you're welcome. Tell us a bit about your story on Linux, how you get started, questions you might have. We have with us Ish. He's a really good uh, Linux. Uh, oh, come on, geek. come on. Linux geek. Let me put it that way. You're really, how do you say that? Diehard Linux fan. <laughs> well, I, yeah. uh, Irish, to be honest, I call myself a Linux enthusiast. And I really like to keep it simple like that because... Uh, when, when I say enthusiast, is uh, an enthusiast is somebody who enjoys doing something. Like I enjoy u- using Linux. I enjoy sharing information, uh, knowledge about Linux, and that's it, full stop. So yeah. I think without wasting so, any more time, we can start. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Maybe maybe you could maybe you could tell me a bit about how you got started with Linux. Oh you, come on, that's, <laughs> that's uh, uh, well. Uh, my first Linux experience dates back 2001, which means 19 years ago, right? So I had uh, a quite, um, call it a long journey with Linux. Started with uh, Red Hat 6.0. Along the way, I, how do you call that? I hopped to different uh, Linux distributions. Uh, I used Debian for a while, I've used Fedora, I've used Ubuntu for quite some time. Uh, then I I fell in love with OpenSUSE. I've used... Uh, I recently used PopOS, I did not like it at all. Some people like it, uh, they like gaming, they like fancy stuff, I didn't like it. Uh, I've used uh, Solus OS, I've used Arch Linux for quite some time. Uh, well, this is just to name a few. What about just you, <laughs> yeah. That was just a few. Well, I, I started, uh, it was uh, maybe four years ago. Yeah, it was uh, using a Raspberry Pi. Many of us got get started using Raspberry Pi and then uh, have known Linux through Raspberry Pi. So yeah, my first OS was Raspbian OS, who is now called uh, Raspberry Pi OS. I didn't then know I, about that, you know? Yeah. When uh, the Raspberry Pi just came out, I did test a Raspbian uh, distribution on a Pi, on the you know the first generation of Pi's when they were out. Uh, 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 it's not until now that I'm hearing about the Raspberry Pi OS. So Raspbian does not exist anymore. Yeah, Raspbian doesn't exist anymore. It's, it's now called Raspbian OS. It's because of the new Raspberry Pi four, which supports uh, um, I think four gigs of RAM and things like. Like that, so that they, they thought that maybe now they can put 64 bit OS on Raspberry Pi. So that's why they moved uh, to Raspberry Pi OS, and we now call it Raspberry Pi OS. Yeah, that's it. And then, yeah, I've used also Debian, Kali mm-hmm. Linux, and uh, Ubuntu. Yeah, that's all. I'm not, uh, I'm not really deep into that. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy li- uh, uh, using Linux. So, if I get it well, you've used Ubuntu, you have used uh, Debian, and you have used yeah. Kali Linux. So, so they are all Debian-based uh, yeah. distributions, like the Deb family. Uh, you've never tried an RPM-based distribution? Yeah, no, wait, I, I forgot that. I've used uh, CentOS. Oh, I've used CentOS. Uh, yes. it, I think it was, to, it was during my internship. I had mm-hmm. to build. Uh, I had to package an RPM. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I have I have used that, and uh, many people doesn't really like uh, CentOS. I don't know why. Maybe you could tell me a bit about that. But uh, it, I it's quite nice. I cannot was, tell you why people do not like CentOS. I've enjoyed working on CentOS. Uh, I've used it both as a server. Uh, on many machines, and I've also used CentOS as a desktop for quite some time. Mm, it's uh, pretty comfortable. It's fine. Uh, of course, my, my, my love for Linux resides uh, uh, in OpenSUSE. Uh, it's my main driver, but like I mentioned before, I 
it does not stop me from you know looking at other projects from time to time hopping destroys and see what uh, the others are doing for example very, very recently i i was i used fedora silver blue for quite some time i think two months or something like that i used it uh, a lot on one of my uh, laptops and uh, because i was really looking forward to see how a linux project is going to to adapt to flat pack that is to have this distribution with trans uh, transactional updates and uh, instead of uh, and focusing on flat packs rather than uh, the traditional rpm packages to be honest i think the fedora uh, community did a very good job with that fedora silver blue if you get some time do try it on a machine uh, experiment with it it will be nice yeah, but uh, yeah, I had something in mind. You you told us earlier that you have tried PopOS. Many have tried it because okay, we have a comment from Rengen. I'm not a geek. Yeah, <laughs> many have tried it, but uh, we we we. I think PopOS kind of like focus on the the part where gaming comes to Linux. Uh, yes, and in fact, in fact, uh, uh, Pop OS, uh, the developers, uh, did make some improvements, uh, and uh, even at the Linux kernel level, so that the gaming experience on Pop OS is optimal, is awesome. All right, but personally, when I use Pop OS, I see too much of fanciness. I do not need this. I need a simple Linux distribution for my daily tasks. That's it. I will. I will tell you something. I'm. I'm someone that that plays game. I'm. I'm a gamer. I'm not like full gaming, but mm -hmm. in my free time, I do. I do play some light games. You mm -hmm. have with us. Uh, Pop OS is a very adapted for develop experience. Yes. Tell us more about that, Percy. Mm. I'm someone that uh, plays games. So. For me, daily driving Linux is something I would love to. I love Linux, but the only the only downside of it is I can't play my games on Linux. Mm -hmm. That's that's the only problem. Many people tell you that yeah, uh, Linux is great for gaming. Yeah, it, at some point it's true. It is good, but. It haven't like reached the level where, where we can actually game on Linux. It's not really good for that right now. I think Microsoft is Windows Microsoft is best for gaming right now. I don't know. Maybe you have a different opinion, but maybe you have one of our viewers. But yeah. I think that uh, um yeah. Now go go on, go on, complete complete your your statement. I think that for, for gaming specifically, I think that Windows is best. We we also see that uh, Windows game can do pirated gaming on Linux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, to be to be fair, I'm not a I'm not a gamer. It's not my main focus when I use Linux, and uh, my my suggestion would be to turn out to the gamers community in Mauritius, and probably we ask them the question. So guys, all those who are watching us, our podcast, and your gamers, and you are a Linux, uh, uh, Linux user, share your experience. Uh, I think, oh, okay, we see there is a comment yes. from Percy, who says that he loves Pop OS. I respect that. Like I say, personally, I did not like the fanciness in Pop OS because I like simple things. I like things to be vanilla. That's my, my take on Linux. Uh, but I do respect that you love Pop OS and you feel that it is very well adapted for developer experience. Oh, I haven't used Pop OS uh, like um, from a developer perspective. For me, it was mostly, okay, this is a new uh, Linux distribution. Download it, run it on a system, look at it. So that's what I did. I look at it. I don't like it. I stopped using it. That was uh, what mainly happened. Uh, we see there's Aditya who says that he, uh, he started with Ubuntu, did distro hopping from Ubuntu to Manjaro to Osh to Gentoo to PopOS to Fedora. To, oh, come on, dude. This is 
uh, you seem to be like a, what I call a Linux polygamist. You can't be married to one. You, mar you, you get married to a lot of distributions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he also adds that Pop! OS and the new Ubuntu 20.04 is good for gaming because it comes in built with latest NVIDIA drivers. Oh, yes, that's one of the major hiccups uh, when it comes to Linux drivers, yeah. especially if you're well, gaming. I think Pop! OS solves a lot of that because even when you download Pop! OS, it mm -hmm. asks you that you're going to use either AMD drivers or NVIDIA drivers. So when you install it, it's already with the latest NVIDIA drivers or AMD drivers. Yeah. You also have a good point where we have the Proton layer. It, it's actually a really nice thing that's happening in the gaming world of Linux. But Aditya, sorry, but I don't think it's ready. <laughs> I have tried <laughs> it. I don't think it's, it's ready for like a real gaming experience. Girish, Maybe, did, you, did you try... Did you try SteamOS? I haven't tried it, but I did hear yeah. some good, good. Uh, how do you call, call that? Good comments about it. I think SteamOS is just like you install it, just a gaming OS. Like you don't have a, like I don't know, like you don't have a desktop and everything. You just hop into it with a controller and. But but then that's uh, mainly what it is designed for. It's like when you have a, a gaming console, you yeah. do not really get a desktop. You, you start it and you start playing game, games. You select the yeah. game you want to play and, you, and, and that's it. So I guess SteamOS, it's, uh, it's focus is gaming. It's not focusing on somebody to install SteamOS and start typing a letter or start using email, you know? So probably that's, uh, that's a good one. And uh, in fact, a few minutes earlier when we were mentioning about uh, this thing about drivers uh, being, uh, you know, giving the facility in Linux distributions that when you install it, it comes pre-installed uh, pre with uh, NVIDIA drivers. Uh, did you know that this was started mainly by Linux Mint, like, Back uh, uh, maybe a decade ago, I forget when was Linux Mint, uh, how do you call that, uh, came into existence. But it was, the I think, the first distribution that gave you the possibility right off your installation with a single click, you could have your uh, video drivers, be it NVIDIA or other proprietary drivers. Whereas all other major distributions uh, after installation, they came without proprietary drivers, and it's up to you to add the uh, relevant repositories and then install the drivers. Uh, uh, I see Rengen is commenting, I think he said 2001, so... 2011. Linux Mint came in 2001. Okay, all right. I uh, forgot about that. I've, I've, I've used Linux Mint for, for some time when it was new when it just came out, and um, it was okay, it was okay, I didn't, became, I didn't become a fan, but it was okay, and uh, slightly uh, later, there was a, a, a second spin-off of Linux Mint based on Debian, and it was called LMD, the Linux Mint Debian Edition, it was a project that was mainly, uh, how do you call that, uh, mainly pushed by one specific developer back then, uh, a developer contributor, if you, if you want to call it that way, and his name is Aiki Doherty. Uh, the Linux Mint project itself, the project leader is Clément, Clément Lefebvre, and Aiki Doherty has been the one to really push to have a Debian version of Linux Mint. And if you go back uh, down, down lane in history, uh, you will find that there were disagreements later where Aiki Doherty left the uh, Linux Mint community and he went on to create his own distribution, Linux distribution, which is completely independent, made from scratch, not a derivative of another distribution, and it's called Solus OS. Oh, I, let, let me just check quickly whether it, because I, I know he changed names from time to time for his distribution. So 
Uh, okay, it's not called Solus OS anymore. It's just Solus. In the beginning, he had uh, uh, the OS uh, added to that. And did you know that Aki Doherty and his team, uh, they are also the developers of a desktop manager called Budgie? You're right. You know, there is... Uh, there is GNOME, there is uh, KD, there is GNOME that comes with the GNOME shell, and uh, there was Unity by Ubuntu, now it is discontinued. There is XFC, LXD, several other different uh, window managers. And uh, the Solus community, they have their own, and it's called Budgie. It looks nice, I've tried it uh, for some time, and it's not that bad. So I'm having a look at uh, the comments that we are having. So, uh, Aditya says, uh, da 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 da. Mm. Oh no, he was just replying to your comment. I see. Okay, uh, the comment is mostly about uh, PS4 and uh, FreeBSD. <laughs> yeah, all right. I think, uh, I think this is a good one for you. If... What? Uh, the one that PSC asked, what is the adoption rate between Debian and RPM based Linux distro? Is Deb more widely used than RPM based? Uh, yes, and I would say Deb is more uh, widely used than RPM thanks to Ubuntu. Because when Ubuntu came as a derivative of Debian, it really revolutionized uh, the Linux world in a sense that it made Linux become more accessible, especially with uh, the free DVDs back in the time. Uh, Girish, you won't remember, maybe Percy, maybe Rengen, uh, and the others in, in the live chat right now would remember that uh, uh, there used to be a time where Canonical, the parent company of Ubuntu, used to send DVDs, uh, sorry, not DVDs, CDs, upon request. So we were in an era where the internet connection was dial-up. You would dial up, uh, your modem would dial up a, a, a phone number by your ISP and you get an internet connection of about maybe 42 or rarely 50 kilobits per second. Imagine that. Imagine working on an internet that slow. Now, on top of that, imagine downloading a Linux distribution on that sort of connection. It's were, it was really a pain. It was really a pain at that time. So when, when Canonical started this thing about, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you saw the comment of Rengen. Oh, Rengen, I, I must tell you, at that time, I used to get uh, 42K at my place, okay? Uh, so I think Providence was uh, a bit better uh, better connected than uh, than Mayberg if you were if you were getting 10k at that time, so yes, it was really a pain to download Linux distributions and Canonical with its offering where you could simply uh, put your name, your address from any country, from any place in the world, and within a month or so you get a CD, an Ubuntu CD by post. That was really awesome, and I think that uh, that was what drove a wide adoption of deb based distribution to answer Percy's uh, question or rather his comment. And uh, because right after that, you would notice that there are so many derivatives of, of, of Ubuntu. Ubuntu itself was a derivative of Debian. And then Ubuntu gave rise to so many derivatives. Like you, you could have, you could see a, a distribution a specific for education, a distribution a specific for 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 health to, to be used in the health sector with applications with like GNU Health and a lot of others. You could see a distribution a specific for accounting uh, stuff because it has GNU Cash. A distribution based on Ubuntu just for video streaming. Just name it and you would find a, 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 an Ubuntu-based distribution for that. Uh, Sandeep just joined us and he says Pop OS for the win. Okay, uh, Girish, maybe you can ask Sandeep uh, to comment about his experience uh, uh, as a gamer, as a, yeah. as, as, as a gamer in Mauritius, and uh, let's see what he has to say. Because, like I told you, I'm not an 
you know, I'm not really a gamer, uh, especially on Linux. Uh, the, the, the one, two things that I, would, I used to play for some time was Angry Birds on my mobile phone. I even <laughs> don't do that these days. So, yeah, go on. Ask your... Uh, mood. Why is that? Oh, uh, Rankin says Pop! OS does not have dual boot. Oh, that's what? weird. Uh, I didn't know, and uh, it's a bit uh, difficult for me to comprehend uh, why you cannot dual boot dual boot Pop! OS with another Linux distribution or Windows. Well, maybe Sandy, other user of Pop! OS, can can comment on that and and say something okay he says i'm gaming on linux since around two years or more and he loves it so you see girish there are gamers on linux yeah there and are. i know uh, and 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 to, to to be fair i know i know i know sandeep and i know he is a uh, uh, a hardcore gamer all right we see kishan has joined us and he says it does have dual boot i'm on pop os myself so here we have Three Pop! OS uh, uh, users, lovers, if we can say, we have Percy, we have Sandeep, and we have Kishan, and we have Rengen, who does not agree and says that Pop! OS does not have dual boot. So we are having Ish. quite a match here. Yeah, Ish, I think I have a good question here. What okay. you can say is the best Linux distro? Exclude yes. gaming. Uh, I think I told uh, earlier, but I knew this question was coming. <laughs> well, very Tell us a bit of shamelessly, very shamelessly, and with total bias, I will tell you the best operating system is OpenSUSE. Here. <laughs> you can see. Right? <laughs> the best Linux distribution is OpenSUSE. And uh, <laughs> Rengen adds it's Gen 2, Sandeep does not ag agree with Suze, and uh, uh, let's see at the other comments, uh, Sandeep says, uh, I've never tried dual boot, but who needs Microsoft spyware anyway? <laughs> All right, I won't go down that lane, I'm not going to comment about uh, these two words. So, Kishan Takudial says, Osh Linux, yes, of course. Why not? Uh, Osh, I've I used Osh for a little bit longer than a year on one of my machines as a desktop, and I was pretty satisfied with it. Awesome performance, uh, super fast. Uh, does not have a lot of things that you don't need. Uh, and this is the thing about uh, Linux distributions, uh, Girish. Uh, most major distributions, they come bundled with a lot of packages that you might not even need. All right? Yeah, For example, true. if you if you install any of those, uh, perhaps Ubuntu or even OpenSUSE or, or Fedora, it comes bundled with LibreOffice and probably you're not going to use LibreOffice. All right? Perhaps you're simply going to use Google Drive, uh, Google Docs, Google Slides, and things like that. So you don't really care about having uh, a full-featured Office suite uh, on your laptop. So what's the point of coming with all, all, all these uh, software bundles? Yeah, that's also the reason why I love Debian. Uh, okay, I see you asked uh, Rengen about his dual boot issue because uh, there are others who do not agree with him about uh, not being able to dual boot Pop! OS with another operating system. Uh, Rengen says he installed it a few times, no option to install my other Linux distro or even my Windows was not detected. Uh, so this may be, this may be uh, a fault on Pop! OS side about detecting an already installed distribution. So I won't say that Pop! OS cannot exist along another uh, operating system or another Linux distribution. Uh, perhaps, if my take, without testing it, it would just take a little bit more tweaking after you have installed Pop! OS. That is, you have maybe Windows running on your machine, you partition the disk, you install Pop! OS, and then you just have to tweak Grub to find the other operating system like Windows or another Linux distribution, and then you should be good to go. Uh, Sandeep says that uh, 
He thinks Ubuntu is the most popular. Yes, no, uh, I will say this cannot be really contradicted or disputed. Yes, indeed, Ubuntu might be, not might be, Ubuntu is the most popular. Uh, and, but he says that he does not care much about which distro. Nowadays, uh, it's more about the desktop environment plus uh, the software you need. And I would agree with Sandeep uh, on this comment because after all, the distribution is what? It is a bunch of software on top of a Linux kernel uh, tweaked by a certain Linux community, all right? But what you see is what makes, uh, uh, is pleasant to your eye. For example, I'm sure Sandeep likes the fanciness of Pop! OS, okay? He likes uh, colorful stuff, maybe rounded corners here and there, but that's not something that I like. So I find something else. So I, I, I find a vanilla gnome to be just perfect for me. All right? And... Uh, but uh, maybe you, Girish, if you install uh, Solution OS or you install another Linux disk, on top of that, you install Budgie, you, you would love it. So it does not matter which operating system you're using, but the desktop environment. All right, he says, uh, I see you asked us something about uh, WSL and WSL2. Sandeep says, I've been doing front-end development on Linux um, since more than six months now, uh, which was previously impossible due to lack of Adobe software. But since these days, he's using Figma, so he doesn't care whether Adobe software run on uh, Linux or not, because Figma runs in a browser, and that's it. That's all that you need. It, it, uh, it somewhat uh, conquers with my previous comment about what's the need of having a complete office suite on your Linux distribution when you could use uh, a cloud-based solution. You could use Google Drive, you could use Office in the cloud, or if you're privacy concerned, you could have a self-hosted next cloud instance with uh, Collabora Office or only Office in that, and you're good to go. And uh, I'm going to spoil the fun because we're going to have another talk about Next cloud and uh, you know on the office uh, during yep. the day in New Asgard. All right, he uh, Sandeep also adds that he tried WSL for a month at uh, La Sentinelle LSL. Ish can tell you about that. Okay, Ish, can you tell anything about uh, Sandeep using WSL? Son, to be honest and to be fair, <laughs> I don't recall about it. I know you did tinker with WSL, but uh, I do not remember the experience you got and what are the kind of things that you experimented. So please, if you can, you know, just comment on that. Uh, what were the things you tried on WSL? And meanwhile, I would let uh, Girish comment about uh, WSL. Yeah, I think we got more comments. But yeah, let I found WSL and how I use it. WSL is actually a project from Microsoft to bring Linux on Windows. It's actually on WSL1, it was using a Linux VM at the back end that would normally run on Hyper-V. And then when you start a, a terminal, let's say on, a, on WSL, like it's, a, it's, it's normally just like opening CMD and typing WSL, it will start the backend and you will have a full terminal Linux. But what was actually the case is it took really long to, to uh, start. And after that, we didn't have direct access to the hardware. Like if you install Linux only on a, on a machine, you will have direct access to the hardware. But while it was on WSL1, we didn't have that. It was going through a hypervisor. Good. But now we have WSL2, which Microsoft is implementing in the OS itself. I don't really know how to explain that. I don't even know how, how it works. Like as a big, I, know, I have a big picture in my mind, but I won't be able to tell you in details how it works. But I know that we will have direct access to the, to the GPU. If, if someone is, uh, for example, working on a machine learning or 
anything that uses, uh, I think, uh, NVIDIA CUDA codes, I, I, I know that there's a use that for machine learning and artificial intelligence, they will be able to do that through Linux on their machine. For example, if you if you just open, it's as simple as, currently I don't have a Windows subsystem for Linux uh, running, I just need to click on my Windows terminal and I'm right into it. Right now, I just did that, did that and, have, and I have a full Linux terminal in front of me. I can do whatever I want. What I do normally is browse to the folder I, I need to, browse to the folder I need to work in, just type code, it will open v, uh, VS Code and connect me to the Linux uh, environment. I will have my full terminal and the uh, of uh, VS Code that is connected to the uh, to the Windows subsystem for Linux. I can do whatever I want and still play my games. <laughs> that's a, that's the reason actually why I use uh, Windows. Also, your best for me. your last uh, your last sentence uh, will perhaps be the answer to Sandeep's comment about. That's cool and everything, but you could just install Linux directly on the machine. So why pay Microsoft to use Linux? So maybe this is where you come and say, hey, you know, I play my games on my Linux machine and it's awesome. I cannot play these games on a Linux distribution, but I love Linux because it gives me the ease to, to do software development, web development. Yeah. I can run my containers and blah, blah, blah. And I want to do all of that on top of this Linux machine without having uh, this abstraction layer of Hyper-V or a virtual machine, all right? So if I go a few comments uh, up in the uh, live chat, I see yeah. uh, Sanjeev reminds me that he had to pester the IT department. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, yes, to get a copy of, uh, of Windows, not a pirated copy, but uh, you know the the yeah. genuine copy of Windows, a, gen, uh, a license of Windows, so that he can install Windows on his MacBook Pro, and uh, it was so bad that he went back to Mac OS. <laughs> All right, now now I get I remember a little bit of uh, what was the sort of experiment that Sandeep uh, was doing back uh, in the time. Percy says that I think uh, with WSL, uh, it will make using Docker on Windows easier. Uh, no need for Docker toolbox uh, for Windows now. Uh, oh yes, uh, because previously when you were, you had to use Docker on Windows, there was this abstraction where uh, it would spin a virtual machine and then Docker will be on top of that. I have some dates on that issue. Let me, let me tell, tell you guys that we now have Docker desktop. Docker desktop, that? yeah, it, it's actually for only Windows Pro, or I don't I don't remember if it's it's, it's not actually supported on the normal uh, Windows Home versions. On the normal Windows versions, like you need you had to do what you were saying. It runs a VM on the background, but now with WSL2, you install Docker desktop and everything on the background is run on the virtual machine. It's run. Uh, it's uh, handled not not by the virtual machine. It's handled by WSL2. So you get instant starting of your of your Docker daemon. You can already work like it like, like you were on a Linux machine. Uh, Girish, I think uh, I, I I'm looking at the last comment by Sandeep and I'm smiling and I would let you. Uh, a gamer and also an aspiring uh, future penetration tester, security expert, uh, a Python developer, or anything that you want to be to comment on that one. So would you like to be a, a top-notch gamer? So let, 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 Girish, Girish, let me finish this sentence. So I'm going to make it fun. Would you like to be a top-notch gamer and be a lesser programmer? Or the reverse. No, you you can be both. <laughs> oh, let, let me let me put it that way. I can I can do, in the worst case scenario I can just dual boot uh, Windows and Linux, do all my work everything on on uh, Linux and just game on Windows. But I don't really like. Uh, cannot do both. Why? <laughs> Rangan says you cannot be both. So Sandeep, uh, I would say 
based on Rengen's statement, uh, you are either an extremely good, uh, a top-notch programmer and a lesser gamer, or a top-notch gamer, but a lesser programmer. All I, right? would, I would prefer a lesser gamer. Like, my main focus is not gaming. I, I game just for fun, just a bit. But when I want to game, I need my game to be here so that I can play it well, good. <laughs> My main focus is always a learning, development, things like that. But yeah, you can. Guys, uh, I think uh, I think uh, I think I'm gonna stop this uh, this uh, funny debate about about gaming and everything that is happening. And uh, I will just uh, finish the podcast on a funny note, not a funny note, but uh, uh, a beautiful note. Uh, because it's uh, nine, uh, almost nine forty, and we will have our next session on uh, at ten ten uh, a.m. Mauritian time. So, how many of you guys know why the Debian Linux distribution is called Debian? And stop googling, stop searching about that. If you know, just answer quickly on the live chat. Okay, we wait for a few seconds. Nobody's saying that. Girish. No, I don't. <laughs> All right. So Debian is uh, one of the most uh, used and also among the oldest Linux distributions. Perhaps the oldest is Slackware, oldest uh, living distribution is Slackware. <laughs> Rangan already says he doesn't care. Uh, Sandeep says it's the second version of Yan. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh, okay. He says do Yan. Well, uh, Debian was uh, created by Yan Murdoch. All right. I A N Yan Yan Murdoch. And uh, at the time when he when he created uh, uh, this Linux distribution, his girlfriend's name was Debra. All right. So. It's a bit of a romantic uh, touch to this Linux distribution to call uh, the Linux distribution Debra and Yan, so Debian. All right. So, uh, unfortunately, a few years ago, uh, Yan Murdoch passed away. Uh, that was a very sad news for the uh, Debian community. But I, I. Okay, Rangan, I will not comment on your last. Uh, uh, I will not say anything on your last comment. So yes, uh, I would uh, really end this. Uh, like to end this podcast, Girish, if you allow. It's nine forty-two. We will have to 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 end the podcast. Even the, the podcast is getting really nice and uh, uh, getting a nice kick. Perhaps, perhaps we will have another podcast after Dave gone and. Uh, and continue the fun about Linux distribution. Hey guys, all those who are with us, Percy, Sandeep, uh, Rengen, Kishan, uh, who were here, who were commenting and listening to us, thank you very much. Stay tuned.